testing one, two, three. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Amen, amen, amen. Breakthrough has come. Glory be to God. We want to stand for the reading of the word. If you would, please turn to the book of St. Luke, chapter 19. We're going to read verses first, uh, 1 through 3 for a foundation. All right, is everyone ready? We're going to start, and this is in the King James Version. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacharias, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of statue. And that's Zacchaeus. I'm sorry, I said Zachariah, but Zacchaeus. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just love you and we just thank you once again for your love. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that it's powerful, Lord. You said that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that all that you desire to accomplish will be accomplished. Thank you, Father God, Lord, that you will arrest everything that would try to hinder what you want to do today. But we thank you for your blood that prevails. We thank you for your word that prevails. We thank you for the name of Jesus. That is the name above all names. And we thank you, Father God, Lord, that your word will go out forth and it will accomplish what you set it out to do, Lord, because, Father God, you said it will not return empty, Lord, but it will fulfill your requirements and, and those things, Lord, that you desire. Father, I thank you, Lord, that as your word goes forth, Lord, we will not just be hearers of your word, but doers. We thank you, Lord, that you shut out everything that's not of you, Lord. Shut out every voice that's not of you, every thought, every preconceived notion. We bless you today, Lord, because, Father God, Lord, you are a God that wants to bless your people, Lord. Let your word bless. Let your word, Father God, set free. Let your word bring healing and comfort, Lord, to those who need comfort. Thank you, Father God, Lord, that you manifest your presence in a great way. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Before you're seated, won't you high five three people and ask them, can you see Jesus in your situation? Can you see Jesus in your situation? Can you see Jesus in your situation? Once you've high five your third person, you may be seen in the presence of the Lord. I want to give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, his presence in this house, the Father, and, and the Spirit of the Lord. And we Thank God for the angel of this house, none other than Dr. Alonzo T. Gay Sr., the elders, our visiting bishop, and visitors, and mothers, and deacons, and everyone in their respective places. I want to share with you today from the subject, Seeing Jesus in the Process. Can you say that? Seeing Jesus in the Process. And just to kind of get an overview so that we're all on the same page, you know we are in the year of the Vav. The six is the, uh, the number six in the Hebrew is, all, is the letter represented by the letter Vav. We know that it also represents a peg, a nail, uh, um, a tent peg. It also is the nail we prophetically attach it to Jesus. The fact that he bore on the cross, he bore the nails to divinely connect us with the Father. Amen. And he being our intercessor has caused us to have divine connection between heaven and earth. Amen. So this is the year that he is attaching, reattaching us, amen, and refocusing us back to him. And that's what we're seeing and we're hearing in the body of Christ. And that's what we're hearing prophetically. He is refocusing us and he's reattaching us, amen, to the things of him. So our foundation is being secured prophetically and we are told that this is the year of stretching. So Isaiah 54, 2 tells us, and I'm reading in the Amplified, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. 
So when we read Isaiah 4, 54, it's exhorting us to enlarge the place of our tent, where we're living and where we are located at, to enlarge it, to strengthen our cords and to lengthen our, uh, to lengthen our cords and to strengthen our stakes. The, the, the cords we know when we look prophetically are stakes or the va are the same thing that was used in the tabernacle of David and the tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness to hold down the tent of the tabernacle where they met with the Lord before they had a permanent dwelling place or a temple for the Lord. Amen. So the va, the nail, the tent peg held the cords securely. Amen. And God wants to hold us securely. And as we tabernacle with him, we will experience that security in him. Amen. So this was the temporary meeting place. But when you look at the word enlarge to define it, it means to make large, to extend, to give greater scope to, to expand, to set free. That word stretch, when you look at it, it means to make something wider or longer by pulling it to become longer or wider than when pulled. So we're, some of us may be feeling pulled while we're in, in the process, amen, when we're feeling that, that tug on us uh, to, to go a little further than where we've been before, amen, to step out of our comfort zone. And that word process is a series of actions that produce something or that leads to a particular event. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, we must see Jesus in the process. So whatever season that you find yourself in is part of a process. It may be a challenging time, but we must see them as seasons. Because remember that we are in the decade of the eye and we have the ability and it's a choice that we can see things positively or we can see things negatively. We can see things as we can see the glass half empty or half full. Yes. Or we can see things challenging or we can see as a season. But when you see things as a challenge, a challenge, sometimes it can seem more of a negative connotation, especially when you're feeling hopeless or you're feeling powerless or you're feeling like, like you're not able to, to make it through that process. So when we look at things like a, 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 as a challenge, it can seem overwhelming to us. Amen. Uh, uh, but. When we look at it as a season, when we think of season, we think that eventually it's going to change. Now, it's cold, uh, a little chilly here in Florida, but we know it's going to change. And we, we used to have a saying when I lived in Michigan, it says, you know, if you don't like the, the, we the weather in Michigan, just wait a few minutes and it'll change. And, so, and, and I know one time when my husband went up to Michigan to, uh, uh, to visit, it rained, it snowed, it sleeted and it held in the same day. And that just really blew his mind. Why? Because you have that seasons will change. Well, when we look at where we are in the process as a season, then it is an encouragement for us that we're not always going to be there. Amen. Turn to someone, tell them where you, where you are right now. It's not where you're always going to be. So when we, when we view the process that we are in as a challenge, we may get stuck. But if we see it as a process, then we get encouraged to, to continue to press through, continue to endure the process that we're in. So today we're looking at the book of Luke. And in this book, uh, prophetically, think, uh, 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 prophetically looking at uh, Luke, one of the things I've shared in teaching about the, uh, the Hebrew year, the Hebrew calendar, is that this year, the 2010, which is the 5770s, in the, according to the Hebrew, it's a year where um, we where uh, according to the Hebrew that Luke, the, when we look at the book of Luke to, to, to expect new revelation and greater revelation. And what, I've, what, I, what has been exciting to me is this, whenever he brings me to the book of Luke, I'm always looking for some tidbit I've never seen before. Because di doesn't he say prophetically that we're going to see things we've not been able to see before in the light of today? So we want to expect to see something different. We want to read that word with expectancy that God is going to reveal something different to you. Amen. So when we look at the word, uh, at the name Luke, actually the name Luke in Greek, because he was a Gentile, he was Greek, it, it means light. And it's interesting, we were just talking about when, when uh, Deacon uh, Neil was ministering last Sunday, he talked about the light. Amen. 
His name means light. And one of the things prophetic they said about the book of Luke is that he's going to be one that the revelation that's going to come in is going to enlighten us. It's going to open up our awareness. And we're praying for revelation, are we not? Are we praying for a greater revelation of, of who Christ is? And so we need to have that revelation when we're in the process. Amen. Somebody say, we have to see Jesus in the process. We have to see. Amen. So when we look at Luke, Luke was a historian. He was a researcher. And in his research, he was able to record more miracles. And out of 18 of the 20 parables that Jesus uh, taught, he had 18 of them listed in his in the book, the Gospel of St. Luke. Amen. So he, he also his book is also has an emphasis on prayer because out of the 15 references that Jesus did to prayer, 11 of them were in the book of Luke. So you see, it's a very powerful book. So when you begin to read and, and, and get uh, a scriptural uh, foundation in the in the book of Luke, you'll find that it'll reveal even more as far as seeing Jesus. Amen man and understanding some of the things that he tried to accomplish while he was here. So he so when we look at the book of Luke and we look at the first uh, first verse of chapter 19, it says, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now, we're very familiar with Jericho because Jericho was the first city that the Israelite had to battle in order to enter the promised land. Some of us may have some Jerichos that we may experience while we're going through the process. But remember, just like the scripture said, Jesus entered, but he went through it. Amen. So we may enter, but don't stay there. Amen. This is not your rest. Jericho is not your rest. Okay. So we, so we need to know that sometimes we will have a battle in order to receive the promise. But, I, you know, I was thinking about warfare, and a lot of times I'll say, you know, in the time of peace is when you're supposed to prepare for war. And, you know, I got to meditating on that thing, and I thought about, you know what, when you think about it in the natural, now, in the military, they don't wait until they're in a battle until they start training their troops. Think about that. To go to send them over to war, and then, then okay, you got on-the-job training, so this is how you shoot your weapon. OK, this is how you identify the enemy. B meantime, you're being bombarded on all sides from the enemy. Right. Yeah. So we prepare for the battle before the battle. Yeah. We have that relationship and that encounter with the Lord before the battle. So when we're going through the process, we're going to be able to see Jesus in the process. Yeah, amen. So anyway, uh, he passed through it, but he didn't dwell there because he was on a mission. Whatever you might be challenged with, whatever you might see as a, a season that you're in, understand and keep in mind, in focus, that when you, you're on a mission and that you can't stop within that season, but continue to go through that season in order to accomplish that mission. Jesus was on a mission. He knew what his calling and his assignment was. And so he didn't stay in Jericho, but he kept on going. So, so we see in verse one that he, he entered and he passed through Jericho. Verse number two, and it says, behold, there was a, na a man named Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, who was the chief among the publicans and he was rich. So when you talk about uh, uh, Zac Zac Zacchaeus that being chief of the publicans, that means he was a Jewish tax collector. And when you look at being a, a Jewish tax collector, he was collecting money for the enemy. He was collecting money for the Roman government because they were under captivity to Rome. I mean, it's like a Christian collecting taxes for ISIS. I mean, it, it, you know, it's the same uh, the, when you look at the same manner, because they were supporting that which was persecuting mm -hmm. Jew, the Jews at that time. Mm -hmm. And not only that, is that, he became rich from overcharging people because anything over and above what the Romans charged, he got. So if he wanted to get more, he had to charge the people more. Mm -hmm. So how many know he wasn't a very popular person at that time? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 3. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was a little, he was little of statue. So first point, it says that he sought to see Jesus. He searched for him trying to see him. We got to search for him, not 
to find, uh, because we want something. We need to search for him to try to see him. Yeah. See, he didn't search for him because he had a shopping list of all the things that he wanted Jesus to do for him. He needed to know who Jesus was. We need to know who Jesus is because that helps us to know who we are. Does that make any sense? Amen. So it said, it said that he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press because he was little of stature. And, you know, a lot of times when we read this particular story, we focus in the fact that he was short. And he was short. But that word stature does not just relate to his height. But it also relates to the fact that how he was viewed by the community. It has to do with how he was respected by the people. In fact, that word statue means uh, the level of respect that people have for a successful person. So he was successful, but they didn't view that success in a positive way. So his, his, his success was not viewed by the people around him. So what it's saying is that he couldn't see Jesus not just because he was short, but because the people didn't respect him. Wow. They didn't like him. And sometimes we can feel that pressure when we are going through the process. We're gonna, we'll feel like somebody doesn't like us, or we'll feel like they're disrespecting us, or that they're not being kind to us. Amen. But see, he didn't let that stop him. And that's what we got to realize that when we're in that process, we got to see Jesus because in seeing Jesus, we won't get stopped. Amen. That the, the opinions of others will not stop us or hinder us from being able to make it over to, what, to see Jesus through the process. Amen. So he wanted to see Jesus. Amen. So because he was a little statue. So he, 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 um, he couldn't for the press. Amen. But he did, he did find a way in order to get over the press. So when you look at talking about pressing, we have been hearing quite a few teachings. And in each one of those teachings, we see different dimensions and different levels. So I asked three volunteers to come and help me to demonstrate what, uh, we, what we have been talking about when we talk about the press. Amen. So we have our three volunteers. We have the very lovely mother, Wanda, very lovely Kelly, and very lovely Bobby Jean. Amen. All right. So anyway, we have been studying about the three manifestations of Christian maturity, have we not? We have the disciple, the steward, step up a little bit. And we have the one who represents the king priest. So the disciple here, what do they do? Eat and follow. Amen. They're in their comfort zone. The steward is trustworthy and they're giving keys. And also they know what it means to sacrifice. They know what it means to give up and give in for the cause of Christ. And then you have the king priest who has authority and access, amen. We see three dimensions. We see, we see the outer court, we see the inner court, and we see the Holy of Holies. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And then we have the dimensions of faith. We have faith here, which is, comes by what? Hearing. hearing and hearing by the word, the word of God. Then we have the next one, which is trust. trust. And that means that we have belief that someone is reliable, that they're good and that they're honest. And then we have the third one, which is knowing. knowing. And knowing is to have a clear, complete idea of something, to have experience. So when we talk about knowing God, that means you know him not because you have faith in the word and you read the word or not even because you trusted him in some things, but because you've experienced him. And then we have the manifestation. We have 30-fold. 
we have 60-fold, and then we have 100-fold. We also have the time of processing and development, where we find ourselves in Egypt, which represents the flesh, represents the, the, the baby stage, amen? We have the wilderness, which represents testing. It represents uh, those things in order we have to trust and believe and, and we have to, to hold on to what we believe God is going to do and able because the faithfulness of God, that testing and the trials is the wilderness, okay? And then we talk about that promise promised land. Amen. That time of promise. Now you notice that I had them hold their hands in different dimensions. They had their hands close together. Medium. They came out a little bit. We're talking about stretching. You know, you, when you get in that middle, you stretch out a little bit. And then you have that total stretching. But let me say this. You know, sometimes when we think about stretching, we always think about it's in the negative. We think about the challenges that we have and, and the, 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 the testing, the trials that we have. But see, God is not so concerned about how much you get is how much you keep. Yeah. And see, what he does is he trains us in the wilderness. When he brings us out of Egypt, he trains us in the wilderness so that he can take us in the promised land. Yes. But if we don't embrace what he has taught us in the wilderness, what he gives us in the promise, those cycles, patterns, and behaviors will cause us to go back to Egypt. Yes. You know, there was a big, uh, a lot of controversy, a lot of uh, 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 news newsworthiness regarding the the uh, you can put your hands down when you get straight but there was a lot of newsworthiness about the lottery and how many billions of dollars is in the lottery and the lord spoke to me he said you know it's not how much you get it's how much you keep because most of the time they say what is about 80 85 percent of the people that hit the lottery that within five years they're broke why because the cycles, patterns, and behaviors had not been arrested. Yeah. So even though they came out of Egypt, even though they went through the wilderness yeah. and they finally uh, hit the lottery, yet when they got to the promised land, they couldn't hold on to it yeah. because they didn't know what to do with it because they came out of Egypt yeah. through the wilderness, but they still kept the Egypt mentality. Can you give them glory today, Holly? Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. So when we talk about going through the process, we must see Jesus because you see the different dimensions, the different levels. See, when we talk about the discipleship or when we talk about faith and the, and the manifestation, we're talking about the dimensions. We're talking about the width and the height and the, and the length of something. But when you talk about the processing from Egypt to the wilderness to the promise, you're talking about the different levels. So you're, you're, you're being expanded both ways. You're being expanded horizontally and vertical. Yeah. So that's why when we're in the process, we got to see Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Let's give him glory. Yeah. Turn to someone and ask them, are you seeing Jesus in the process? Are you seeing Jesus in the process? So when we look at verse 4, it says, And he ran ahead, I'm sorry, he ran before, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. So Zacchaeus did what he needed to do in order to see Jesus. And God provided for him that ability for him to do. Why is that? Because when you look at the sycamore tree, the sycamore tree was an ancient tree that had been imported from Egypt. And how many know when we talk about Egypt, it's symbolic to bondage. It's symbolic to, to uh, the flesh, okay? So it is a native plant of Israel. And so it was brought over, from, I mean, of Egypt, and it was brought over to Israel. And it's just like the mulberry tree and the fig tree. It does bear fruit, but the fruit, the fruit is so bitter until the only one that eat it are the poor people. See, the fruit of the flesh is very bitter. And see, when the, when the enemy has us in that place where we don't know who we are and we think we're poor, but, we're, but when we're actually rich in Christ Jesus, then we'll eat that bitter fruit. 
and we, it would not do us any good as far as helping us to grow. So it, it and, and, the, and, the, and the limbs on the sycamore tree is low enough and, and that even a child can climb up. So, so here it was that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and here he ran ahead and when he ran ahead there was a tree that was there uh, and he was able to climb that tree even though he was short he was able to climb that tree and and that tree was a provision see God will give us provision in the process that we were in but we must see him we must choose to get in that place in order to be able to see him so when we when we look at that see the tree provided a place for him as far as to deal with his flesh, the statue, the fact that he was short, but it didn't deal with what he had to have done in the, on the inside. Mm -hmm. See, that's why we have to look at that flesh will only take us so far. Those things that we do because it's what we're used to doing, God is calling us to a higher elevation in him, amen. Mm -hmm. He's calling us to that place where we will be able to see him above the crowd above the voices that might be trying to hold us back. So he sought elevation so he could see Jesus. In one of my devotions a, a couple of weeks ago, one of the things that it said, it said, do not fret yourself with things too high for you. Because yeah. even a little child, so, Cause even a, even a little child, if something a toddler, if something is too high for them, they'll try to find something to climb onto in order to get whatever it is that they need. So how much more do we need to get what we need to do in order to get to that place of elevation? If we find ourselves that we're out of tune and out of sync, then we need to do whatever it is that will get us in sync. If we're not reading our word, if we're not praying, if we're not coming to Bible study, whatever it is that we're not doing that we know that will elevate us above where we are right now yeah. so that we can see Jesus in our situation, we need to do it. Yeah. See, Zacchaeus is an example of that. He did what he needed to do. The only thing is he, 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 he was only, there was just one dimension that he was able to deal with, and that was the flesh. Because he was short, he was able to get elevation so he can see as far as being, uh, him being short. But see, God wanted to do something else, and God wants to do something else in us. David, who's one of my favorite characters in the Bible, and I shared this on, on Wednesday when I taught, is the fact that David, he, his life, is told about in first and second Samuel and in first Kings and first Chronicles that talks about his life and the things that he did but in the Psalms and he wrote he's accredited for reading for writing 75 Psalms at least it, to, it told of his testimony the testimony of the things that God had done to deliver him when there were situations and circumstances that he was being processed in and he didn't know what to do about it but he but he said in Psalm 61 2 he says from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to that rock that is higher than I yeah. turn to someone and say you got to see Jesus in your pro, in the process got to see Jesus in the process. So verse 5 in chapter 19 of the book of Luke, St. Luke, it says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. So Jesus needed to invite, needs to be invited by us while we're in the process. Yeah. We need to invite Jesus in that process instead of uh, using the tools that we're used to use because the only way we're going to see a change is doing something different than we've done before. Because if, do, if you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that is what? Insanity, right? It's insanity. So he, he, Jesus needs to be invited to that process that we're in. You know, when I, I had a surgery on my thumb a couple weeks ago, and they had to numb my thumb in order to go in there and cut. And uh, uh, he and I, Dr. Gay and I was talking because some, sometimes we have challenges in our lives and they're, they're kind of um, symbolic. There's something in the spirit that God's talking about. And so when they were dealing, when I was dealing with this thumb, and I had been dealing with it since October, there was a process that I went through with it in the natural. And it was at this time when I went for the surgery, it was like the Lord was saying, 
I need to, it, it need, there needs to be a deeper work done in your thumb in order to get the infection out so that you would be able to get, so it'd be able to heal. And so there's a deeper work that God is doing in our lives so that he can bring healing to us. And it is that not a, one of the scriptures that God gives us for this season in our life, especially the decade, is, is out of uh, St. Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 46 through 49, where he talks about uh, not only hearing the word, but doing the word. Yeah. So when I was in the, in the office and she, was, uh, she had numbed my finger, she says, before I, before I start cutting, I'm going to numb this. She says, you're going to feel the pressure, but you're not going to feel the pain. So when you're being processed, when you see Jesus, it's almost like a numbing effect because there's a peace that surpasses all understanding that he'll cause you to walk in, that while you're in the process, yes, you might feel the pressure, but you're not going to feel the pain, amen, because you can see Jesus in the process. Glory be to God. So he needs to be invited. Uh, and in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, in the um, uh, Message Bible, we know it in the King James Bible. And in fact, I'm going to read it in the New King James Bible first, then I'm going to read it in the Message Bible. But 2 Chronicles, another scripture for this decade, and you, you'll find yourself going back. And that helps, re, I think it helps reset us and refocus us. When we go back to those scriptures that we've been talking about since we've come into the 2010s, amen. So in, in 2 Chronicles, I'm going to read it in the um, 16, 9. I'm going to read uh, the first part of it in out of the New King James Version. Then I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible, Dr. Gay's favorite version. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal towards him. So Jesus looked up. Amen. So when we look at it in the, in the um, Message Bible, it says, God is always on the alert constantly on the lookout for people who are totally committed to him. So he's on the alert. Jesus was on the alert. When Zacchaeus got in that tree, was in that tree, Jesus, what? He looked up. Yes. He looked up and he saw him. Turn to your neighbor and say, can Jesus see you? I know this is not a shouting message, but all right, all right. Yes, it is. So he looked up and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for the day I must abide at thy house. So God is looking for us. Amen. <laughs> He's looking for us to be in that elevated place so he can, so he can show himself strong. Glory be to God. So when he acknowledged his presence, Jesus validated Zacchaeus by acknowledging him and wanting him to abide with him. See, that's what he wants to do with us. He wants to validate us, but we got to see him in order to be validated. Because when we, as we see him, so are we. That's why we need to see him. So he did, he, he, he said, and he, and he said to him in verse 6, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. So Isaiah 54, 2 tells us to spare not or do not block what God is trying to do. When we talk about enlarging the place of our tent, it says spare not. And then it begins to tell you to lengthen your cords and to strengthen your stakes. So we can't hold back when God begins to move upon us. When he begins to show us things that's going to help us through the process, we don't want to hesitate. We don't want to try to rationalize it. We don't want to try to make excuses. But we want to step up to the plate. Amen. Like Zacchaeus did. He stepped up in the, uh, in the plate. So it's like, you know, you go to a restaurant and on the menu it says, no substitutes because sometimes we think we can substitute other things for Come obedience on. On. Yeah, but we cannot su substitute anything for obedience obedience is obedience and that's it yeah. either you do it or you don't and partial obedience is still disobedience yeah. so obedience is better than the sacrifices we make Sometimes we think, well, I'm always here and I'm doing this and doing that, so I don't have to be obedient to what God is saying. But if you want to go through the process, 
you got to be obedient. You got to see, you got to respond to him when he says and respond with haste. Verse seven, and when they saw it, turn to your neighbor and say, who is they? Who is they? Turn to your neighbor and say, pardon my grammar. Pardon my grammar. But who is they? They are always saying something. Yes. But who are they? Yes. Who, are, who are the days in your life? All right. All right. So when they saw it, they all what? Murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Now let me share a few things I've learned about they. People who murmur and complain about what you are doing are on the lower level. See, he was up in the tree, but they were on the lower level. Instead of us looking up to them, we need to what? Look down. Because God is calling us to a high calling. And when I say look down, not in a negative way, but as far as not giving them the power in your life, not giving them the strength in your life. Amen. Another thing when we talk about they is look at the fruit in their lives. No matter how many titles they may have in front of their name, if there is no fruit, then they're stuck and then they want to get you stuck. They're stuck because they're angry and disappointed with themselves because they know they're not doing what they're doing. And then when you do what you're supposed to do, then it makes them even more angry and disappointed because they be feeling guilty of what they're not doing. So that's where you get the criticizing, you get the judging, you get the accusing. All those, those that murmur and complaining that takes place from they is because when we're doing what we're supposed to do, then we're exposing what they're not doing. It's like the crabs in the barrel. When one gets out, it exposes all the ones that are still in there. <laughs> See, the children of Israel, they were in the wilderness and they were murmuring. But, you know, I never saw this before, but the Lord said, when I was studying, he says, they were murmuring, complaining, just like the they because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. God was doing what he was supposed to do, but they weren't do doing what they were supposed to do. Do you know what they were supposed to do? Hmm? What were they supposed to do? They are supposed to trust God. Isn't that something? I never saw it that way. Because if they trusted him, they wouldn't have been murmuring and complaining. So when you think about they, think about the fact, okay, what are they, what, why are they murmuring and complaining? Why are they trying to get you, uh, get, on, uh, get you on their side? Because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And the only way they're going to do what you, they're supposed to do is that you hold up the standard. Yeah. And then, then they see that you're not going to bend and you're not going to bow. Then they'll either come alongside or they'll go the other direction. Amen. So Jesus looked up. Remember, eagles dwell in high places. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you an eagle or are you a turkey? <laughs> Verse, eight. Verse 8. And we're almost done here. Verse 8. <laughs> and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone, or any man, by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So, in order to make it through the process, we must live a lifestyle of repentance and forgiveness. Because repentance and forgiveness will always reset us. If we do self audits not being quick to give excuses or to blame shift it to everybody else, we'll make it through the process. See, when we have a lifestyle of repentance and forgiveness, then it empties the junk out of our trunk yes. so that we can go higher in the things of God yes. because we're releasing ourselves, we're releasing, releasing God so that we can remain at that high altitude. Yes. See, the only way you're going to see Jesus is you've got to be above 
the, pre the press, above the crowd, above the situation, above the circumstance, above whatever it is that is that that you're what's what you're in, what's happening to you in the season that you're in. You got to be able to rise above, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is allow Him to elevate you in that place so that you'll be able to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn to someone and say, "We must see Jesus in the process." Verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. So Zacchaeus' name in Hebrew means clean and pure. Was that the life he was living? See, the, when names are given in Hebrew, it speaks of destiny and purpose. So Zacchaeus was not living according to the destiny and purpose that he was born for. He was not walking in his prophetic destiny. God puts us through a process so that we will walk in our prophetic destiny. What has been prophesied to you? What has been spoken to you? What has God spoken to you in your time, your quality time, and still uh, quiet time with him? Are you walking in that? Is your life reflecting that? Because if it's not, then we, we just need to see Jesus so we can get reset. Amen? No condemnation, no guilt, but get reset. Amen? As simple as that. So he was not walking in prof prophetic destiny. Another thing is the sycamore tree is a symbol to the Hebrew of regeneration. See, there was regeneration that took place in the life of Zacchaeus because of this event. Amen? Because he saw Jesus. Remember that God is able to turn things around what we encounter in the flesh because when he crawled up, came up the tree, the tree represents flesh. But when he saw Jesus, it became a time of regeneration. Let's give him glory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is able to take those things that we've encountered in the flesh when we were in that time of Egypt in our life. He's able to take those things just like he used that tree to launch Zacchaeus forward, he can use it to, to launch us forward if we will allow him to show himself to us. Amen. So God was able to turn things around. So he was of Jewish heritage, as Jesus had indicated. God's chosen people. 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, God's special people, that you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. So we are the chosen ones, amen. And in, in, in the Message Bible, it says, you are the ones chosen by God, yes. chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. Zacchaeus testified to them and told them, if I've taken anything from you, why? Because there was a change that took place in Zacchaeus. When there's a change that takes place in us, you know, the songwriter said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't. What? Keep it to myself. Amen. So last verse, verse 10. Let's say that all together. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The mission and the message has not changed. The same mission and message that Jesus had then, we have today. Amen. Amen. We must go back to the cross yes. where Jesus saw us. Right. Amen. Right. And while we were without strength, he looked through yes. the generations yes. and he saw you and I yes. in this place yes. praising him. Yes. So as we see Jesus in the process, we'll be able to testify like David, amen, and encourage others to see him. Let's look at Philippians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 14. I'm going to read this in the American Standard Version. And it says, Not that I have already obtained or am already made perfect, but I press on, if so be that I may lay a hold on that for which also I was laid hold on by Christ Jesus. Let's read 13 all together. Brethren, 
I count not myself yet to have laid hold, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and stretching forth to the things which are before. I press on towards the goal until the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But I want to zero in in this one point where it says, lay hold on that for which also I was laid hold on by Christ Jesus. To lo- to, what does it mean to lay a hold of something? Grab, Grab it. Grab You're grabbing it. Okay. So what, what he's saying, what Paul is saying is that Jesus grabbed a hold mm-hmm. of him. Mm-hmm. He grabbed a hold of him. He says, and so I need to grab a hold of mm-hmm. that who grabbed a hold of me mm-hmm. to find out why he grabbed a hold of All me right. for. Yeah. Right. See, when we see Jesus in the process, yeah. then we know he grabbed a hold of us. We know he's, he's, he's got his hand on us, mm-hmm. but we got to go after him. We got to run after the one who grabbed me. Yeah. Turn to your name and say, Tag, you're it. The process will help us to lay hold or grab a hold of the person who grabbed a hold of us. The songwriter said, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And now I'm no longer the same. (laughs) We got to... Allow him to reset us. We got to allow him to refocus us. And we got to say, okay, I know I'm in a season right now, and I know I'm kind of distracted in this season. But is this distraction keeping me from grabbing a hold of the person that grabbed a hold of me so that I can know why he grabbed me in the first place? Turn to your name and say, why were you born? Turn to someone else and say, why were you born again? again? We need to grab a hold of it. And the only way we can do that is by seeing Jesus in the process. Romans 8, 29 and 30 in the Amplified. Let's read that all together. For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, He also destined from the beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness, that he might become the firstborn among many brethren, and those whom he thus foreordained he also called, and those whom he called he also justified, acquitted, made righteous, putting them into right standing with himself, And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and a condition or state of being. (laughs) See, when, when I was getting my surgery on my thumb, and it was numb. Just before the feeling started coming back, she was done. (laughs) David said in Psalms 27, 30, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to encourage you today, we got to see Jesus in the process. Because when you're being processed, Amen. Sometimes you might feel like throwing in the towel, but you know what? He's going to throw it back at you because he grabbed a hold of you for a reason. And that which he has grabbed a hold of you for, you got to fulfill that destiny and that purpose. You can't look to the right nor to the left. And when the enemy tries to tell you, well, you know, you did this in the past and you know, you even just did this yesterday. God says, in his word, that he has acquitted us, made righteous, putting us into right standing with him, 
through the blood of the lamb. He died on the cross. He took those three nails, those vases, the same vase that held down the temple. He became that temple for us, amen, that we coming to him, that we can be elevated above our sins, amen. We can be elevated above our mistakes, above our shortcomings. We can be elevated even above they. So in closing, I trust that you all will meditate on some of these scriptures because it's so important that we continue to fight. We need to press like Zacchaeus did to see Jesus, to see him and, 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 and in pressing, rising. He, God has already told us he set us in heavenly places. We need to get in position like Zacchaeus did. He, he knew he wasn't, he wasn't going to see anything being down there with the crowd. So he got in a place where he could see things. Get in that place where you can see things, where you can see Jesus. Amen. I want to have you do one more exercise. Everyone stand that can stand. And I want everyone to put your hands over your eyes <laughs> and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus open, my open my eyes so I can see, so I can see Jesus, Jesus in every situation, in every situation. And, embrace and embrace what you are trying to accomplish, you are trying to accomplish in, this in this season of my life. Now take your hands down, keep your eyes closed. And if I can have some music, uh, take Take a moment and whatever it is, whatever season you, that you feel that you're in, whatever challenge you may have, or maybe you're concerned about someone else or something else. But I want you to just take that time and just focus on that. And as you focus on that, as you bring that to your remembers, invite Jesus to that situation and allow him to speak to you. And he, whatever he speaks to you, you may see him in your mind's eye. You may get a picture in your mind. You may sense his presence or receive a thought. Or maybe there might be a thought that might light upon your mind or you may feel something drop in your spirit. When that occurs, I want you to raise your hand. If you sense the presence of the Lord, if you sense he said something to that situation or that you see you've gotten some type of encouragement in a situation, I want you to just raise your hand. Because like any muscle, you got to exercise. You have to exercise seeing Jesus. You have to be able to settle yourself within and allow him to reveal himself. Zacchaeus got in position so that he could see Jesus. If the Lord showed you something, or if you sense something, just raise one hand if you would, so I know you're not just praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I can have a mic. Yeah, just one minute. If I can have a mic real quick. One of these. I just want three people to share one sentence or less. One word is fine. What did you feel God spoke to you? Don't tell me the situation. We don't want to know anything about just what did he say to you. Just come quickly, real quick, and just say what he said. Just to He says, I'm repositioning you from where you are right now. Wow. Awesome. Anyone else? He says, peace, be still. All right. Real quick. One sentence. Go, come on, Sister Cynthia. Come on. One sentence or less. The struggle is over. Wow. Not by your power, but by my might. Right. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. We're going to transition over to the communion table at this time. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
Glory, 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 glory. It's simple. Amen. That was a very, very powerful word. Praise God. Can you see Jesus? Hallelujah. In the midst of your crisis, in the process. Can you see Jesus in the process? And that's going to be so important. And I tell you, um, uh, that was a very sober message. My God, you can, you, you, I mean, uh, that message, I know that everybody will desire to get a CD, and they will, they will be ready Wednesday. You can listen to that over and over and over. Because if you can't see Jesus in the midst of your process, that means that you need to be reset. Amen. Amen. She told us how to get reset. We got to, we got to see Jesus. We got to go back to Jesus. Hallelujah. And repentance always reset us, isn't that right? Glory be to the Lamb of God. Can you lift your hands in the presence of the Lord? That's very, very powerful. Hallelujah. That's very, very proud, powerful. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. It wasn't a message to tell you how to get rich. Amen. But it was a message uh, that in the midst of your process, can you see Jesus? If I can see Jesus, I'm going to be all right. Amen. And I shared this one time before when we was little. Amen. Um, um, I, uh, my brother and I, we was in the room in the old house. And, and uh, man, I tell you what, when nighttime come and, and uh, had to go to bed, man, and it's hard. it was hard to go to sleep. The old folks, when they tell you to close your eyes and go to sleep, they didn't play. We didn't have all this stuff hanging over the baby crib because we didn't have no whatever, all the little Supermans and all that type of stuff. No, the switch was our Superman and and and, and, and Fruit Loops and all that type of stuff. They didn't have all that. You would go to sleep. But I cried out. I say, Mama, 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 I see something. Man, she come in there and say, ain't nothing in here, boy. She go back, man. I did my very best. It seemed like y'all never experienced. You close your eyes, it seemed like it get darker. And then we had a closet inside that little in our little room, and it seemed like all kind of stuff was coming out of that closet. <laughs> mama, 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 yeah, I was just having a little fit. My brother, he was okay. He didn't see nothing. So, but anyway, but. The moment I was able to see mama in the midst of my process, everything was all right, man. Everything was all right. And that's we got to see Jesus. Zacchaeus, I love that. You say he got up in that tree so that he can see Jesus. My God, that is very, very powerful. The blind man, he didn't care what was going on. All he did just cried out. Jesus, thy son of David. Hell, I can't see you right now, but I need Jesus, thy son of David. Have mercy on me. Y'all know the story. Jesus opened his eyes. He was able to see. Woo, I once was lost, but now I found. I was blind, but now I see. Glory be to God. Those of you that are watching through, by the way, of the Internet, if you're not saved, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need to make that choice because out of all the things that are taking place in this world, he's the only one that can see you through and give you peace at the end. Amen. We're going to have our communion and uh, our elders. Praise God. Very powerful message. Glory be to God. And the scripture says this. We read them from Matthew 26, starting at 26. 
And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and broke it, and he blessed it. Likewise, he did the cup. He gave thanks. We're going to ask two of our elders, if they will. One will lift up the body, and the other one will lift up the cup before the Lord. Now they're going, they're getting ready to orchestrate and pass it out. Those of you that are watching by the way of internet, Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. We encourage you to join us now. You may say, Well, I don't have grape juice. Well, get 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 something, water or something symbolic. If you don't have a little wafer, get a piece of bread. And do this. Amen. Uh, this is part of the covenant that our Heavenly Father have made with us through His Son, Jesus, when He had given His life for the remissions of our sin. His body that was beaten, that was bruised. His body was the only body that didn't give in. And glory be to God. And now it's broken for us so that we're able to partake so it can bring forth the physical healing, the spiritual healing, and the mental healing. And likewise, when the, when the uh, soldier took that spear and plunged it in his side, out came blood and water, blood for the remissions of sin. Blood had birthed the New Testament church. So we invite you to do something now and partake. Once again, he said, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. If any man will eat of his body and drink of his blood, amen, you are one with him. He is one with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves us so much. Jesus paid the price in full. The ransom was by his punished body, death to his body. Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He called us his friends. He suffered, bled, and died. Innocent blood. And on the third day morning, the Father got him out of the grave. He declared that all authority and power has been given unto him. Can you say amen to that? So we would want to commune every chance we get. Hallelujah. Redemption blood of the sheriff of Catherine's cross. 
for the remissions of our sin. This represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Has anyone been overlooked by the body, the bread, and symbolized the body of Christ Jesus? Has anyone been overlooked by the cup, which represents the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remissions of our sin? Silence will give consent. Once again, as they was eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he break it and gave to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body. Take your time. Sometimes we rush through this, but there's no need to rush. And he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drank it new with you in my father's house. Hallelujah. We are king priests. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We are the generations of priests. And I thank God for that, that that day is going to come that we all be able to drink it together with our Lord and our Savior. Can you say amen? What an honor and a privilege that we'll be able to commune with him. Glory be to God because we are in covenant with him by his shed blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And this bring a conclusion to our uh, communion service. We thank you for being so patient. Uh, we're going to have uh, announcements. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have any first time visitors in the house. Amen. Remember that you can always give your tithes and offerings online also at any time during the week. Go to www.axmeninc.com and when you're not here, give your tithes and offerings online. And those that are watching by the internet, please don't forget that you can give anytime online. It's a great privilege to give into the kingdom of God. If you'd like to give prayer requests for souls, we ask that you would get a prayer request slip, write their name on it. It is only for souls folded up lengthwise. Place it in the basket, and it will be placed on the prayer wall. We have a birthdays and anniversary at the end of every month on the Sunday following the Sunday services. In February, it is Dress Down Month. We're able to wear warm-ups for the services. Amen? All right, Dr. Gay's already told us we don't want bad clothes just nice warm-up suits on monday morning prayer don't forget us every morning from 5 to 7 a.m we're praying for a greater revelation of who christ jesus is amen we're having an awesome time please come out on monday morning remember for the new members class and a dinner meeting on saturday february the 20th at 4 p.m if you have not signed up new members, please do that. We would like for you to know what Acts Ministry is all about. There's a, provide, uh, there's a sign up sheet out front, and we would urge all new members to attend that class. The repeat seminar for the uh, Inner Healing and Deliverance, or the Deliverance, will be Saturday, March the 5th at 9 a.m. The seminar will be also open to those who have not attended the regular full seminar. If you would like to receive ministry for the next full seminar, that will be on July 9th because those slots are filling up, so please sign up for those. In the men's fellowships, 
The men's fellowship will be Saturday, March the 19th at 9 a.m. This meeting will be held at Broadway Diner in Bartow. Please see Elder Sam or Elder Terrence for the further information. The sign-up sheet will be available in the fellowship hall. The bishops are coming to Acts Ministries. I mean, the bishops are coming. Dr. Jerry and Dr. Shearer will be our special guests Sunday, March the 20th, during our morning service here at Acts Ministries at 1030. Please invite people to come out and hear our bishops. They are uh, Dr. Gay and Dr. Sanders overseers, awesome people in the, in the Lord. The youth activities, March 24th, 25th, and 26th, for further information, is forthcoming. Amen. Bring out the youth. On Wednesday, March the 30th, we'll have our breakout rooms instead of our regular teaching. It will be our singles, our couples, and our youth on that March 30th. Amen. Dr. Gay, Dr. Sandra, do you have any further announcements? If not, I have a card to read. It says, Dr. Gay, while I could never repay you for the word you spoke over my life on September the 14th, 2004, this is a small gesture of appreciation to say thank you. To be honest, I held almost I had almost lost faith in prophets for obvious reasons. Your words and that of Dr. Sander have are and bearing fruit in my life right now. I have and have restored my faith in the office and the gift. I've been saved and in the church for 20 plus years and have never had a prophecy spoken to me and the one that time that it happens it was so on point so thank you for taking your gift and God seriously I pray God's manifest blessings manifold blessings on you and your family and your ministry sincerely Reverend Val she is Bishop Anthony's little sister praise God Amen. all right that's it Amen. How many of you have ever heard of Bishop David Evans? Very powerful man. And um, um, the Lord had Dr. Sandra and I to minister. Uh, she is very close to Bishop David Evans. And uh, the Lord had uh, Dr. Sandra and I to uh, minister prophetically in her life by the Spirit of the Lord. And um, glory be to God, uh, I was hearing uh, that some things begin to take off for her and have taken off so much until um, uh, she is number three to uh, Bishop David Evans. And um, uh, Bishop David Evans uh, is sought after all over the world. And so we're just so honored. Um, you just don't know. You just be obedient. And uh, one of the things that uh, that was ministered back to us um and I know all prophets are not like this, but there's, there's quite a few. They're cocky. They're heady and high-minded, and they draw a lot of tension to themselves. We draw it to Jesus. <laughs> We're not fortune tellers. We don't operate in darkness. We don't mix the holy with the profane. We don't do that. And so uh, we bless the Lord for um, uh, trusting us enough to allow us to Go beyond the veil to hear what he is speaking on the behalf of his daughter. So I'm, uh, we bless the Lord for that. Amen. All right. We're going to, is all heart satisfied? Yes. Yes. I see hope all over you. I want to encourage you to get that CD. Amen. Listen to it. Study it. And sometimes, as she said, we have a tendency to try to substitute. But every time you substitute for something that is so holy, how many know you get further and further, amen, into obscurity, amen. And so, but, uh, but listen to that. It's a very, very sober message that will reset you so that you can see Jesus in the midst of your process. I don't like certain processes, amen, but I've learned to know that while I'm there, amen, I need to see Jesus. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? I see the light of the Lord shining, church. We're getting ready to go, but I see the light of the Lord shining. I see ha Shaba. I see the light coming, the, the light coming up behind the mountain. Amen. 
And the mountain is not a bad place because we all been there for a while. But I see the light uh, breaking, uh, breaking just beyond the mountain, and, and it's, and it's going to get higher and higher. Won't you just lift your hands, praise God. Amen. You're going to see Jesus. Amen. They call him the light of the world. Hallelujah. And you're going to be able to see him uh, in your process. If you can see Jesus, you know that everything is all right. Amen. The word of God is not to hurt you. The word of God is there to aid and assist you. The word of God is the only supernatural word that I know that is able to separate soul and spirit. Sometimes our soul get in the way. Our soul is consist of our mind, will, and our emotions. Isn't that right? But the Holy Spirit is going to help you to keep the main thing the main thing. This is not the job of your feelings. Don't get me wrong. We don't make light of your feelings, but this is a job for spirit to spirit. I want to see Jesus, amen, in the midst of my process. If I can see him, Amen. I'm going to be all right. Maybe glory be to God. If you can't see him, you can sense him. Your sensing is like a seeing. Hallelujah. If you can feel him, that's like a seeing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we reverence him right now? Can we just reverence him right now? Amen. There's mountains that some of us have tried to climb. Amen. And every time we try to attempt that mountain, we always come with the same cycles and behavior uh, uh, patterns, which are different behaviors. And we always feel like we're walking in defeat when it comes to this one particular mountain. Amen. But can you see Jesus now? Can you see Jesus now? Can you see Jesus now? Amen. He's there for the down and hearted. Those who feel downtrodden, he's there. Those of you that are watching right now, he's there for you. Glory be to God. See Jesus in the midst of your process. Hallelujah. Your process is not a bad place because you've been led in that place called process. It's because the Lord knows you're ready. But you've got to take your hands off. You can't control this process. You cannot dictate to this process. The best thing that you can say in this process is saying, Lord, I yield. I yield. I can't hold out any longer. I have proven to myself that I can't get myself to the next dimension. Out of all of my influence and my affluence, glory be to God, it can't get me there. But what a friend we have in Jesus. And all of my sins and griefs to bear. What it is a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. So, Lord, I bring myself. I grab my own self by the nap of my neck. And I bring myself to you. Hallelujah, so that I can see you. If I can see you, everything is going to be all right. If I can see you, it let me know that I'm on the right path. If I can see you, glory be to God, I have drawn my attention away from the problem, and I have drawn my attention to the promise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say, I want promise. I want the promise. Hallelujah. And everything that Christ has for you, amen, it is not a false promise. It is not a false promise, church. It is not a false promise. It's already paid for. It is yours. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You are the generations of priests. You have legal access, amen, to occupy those things that is in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Because Jesus has paid the price. And hallelujah. And I just want to see Jesus in spite of what's going on inside my home, in spite of what's happening on the job, in spite of what's happening in America, in spite of what's happening with our government, in spite of what's happening around the world, if I can see Jesus in the midst of my process and my development, I'm going to be all right. Hallelujah. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. If I can see, you know what? Me and the prophet was talking the other day. You know, sometimes sometime the enemy try to get us to draw our attention, amen, and seeing what the devil is doing and what he is saying, amen. But you know, we're in the place now that we don't care what he's saying, we don't care what he's doing. All I want to do is see Jesus in the midst of my process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God. If I can see Jesus, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We're going to close on this. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. You are Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all the heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms they may all pass away but there's something about that now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And everybody says, amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in with us. We'll see you.